The Epicure constituency has launched its transformational <coughs> development plan for the five years period from 2021 to 2025 aimed at both the residents of Epukiro and prospective investors eager to contribute to the constituency growth. To provide further insight into the plan, we are joined by Paki Pakairai, Pakarai, sorry, the Omaheke Regional Councillor of Epukiro constituency offers. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the Daily Roundup. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> yes. um, and thanks for having me. All right. It's a special pleasure having you on this program. All right. Briefly, just walk us through the main priorities of the Transformational Development Plan. How do they address the specific needs and challenges faced by the residents of Epukiro? Thank you very much. Um, uh, to start with, Epukiro constituency was inhabited in 1924. Um, this year we are marking the commemorations or we are commemorating 100 years of existence. Um, when, when we took over uh, as the regional council, as the leader of the constituency, mm -hmm. we came together with the residents and all the inhabitants of the constituency. Uh, one was to understand their needs and two was to project their aspirations but in relation to the Omaheke Regional Council's mandate. Mm -hmm. We then therefore produced a, a document that we refer to as a transformational strategy map. Mm -hmm. uh, within this strategy, uh, we, we, what we said first is that we seek a developed Epukiro constituency mm -hmm. facilitated by a trusted consolidated team. And when I say this, because it's not talking about politician, He's talking about whether you are a farmer, uh, you are a church leader, or you are an entrepreneur. We should come together and make sure that we contribute and facilitate. And how we're going to do that, it has been defined through our mission, uh, which is facilitating innovative de developmental opportunity mm -hmm. through participatory uh, and continuous empowerment of our community. Uh, we, we want to ensure an inclusive socioeconomic development to all our inhabitants in Epukiro. Mm -hmm. the, the strategy may contain four pillars, namely human growth and development, mm -hmm. development and enabler, uh, sustainable national resource management, mm -hmm. and stakeholder satisfaction. Now, if you look at those four, each one carry three sectoral focus area. Mm -hmm. If you look at human growth and development, we focused on community wellness that encompasses food, shelter, health. Community capability that speaks to the performances of our, of our schools. We have four schools in our constituencies. Mm -hmm. Training of entrepreneurs, training of our farmers, training of youth. Then we have community governance, once again, we needed to strengthen and beef up the structures at local level from the village. And, and what we have done in this case, we, Pukiro has 97 villages. We have clustered them together, those that share challenges, share resources like water grazing. They form what we refer to as locality development committee, referred to as LDC. So, Consequently, we created like 12 LDCs and the chairpersons of all those LDC are automatically a member of a CDC. So meaning when the constituency development committee is in session, it's like the parliament of a Pukiro is in session because everyone is coming from a far locality representing the interests, the needs of the community. And that's community governance because we needed to make sure that people are involved, are participating. People are in a position to review and assess the progress or regress thereof. Mm -hmm. 
So you mentioned already the steps taken to involve local communities in the planning, and that's one of, of the areas that you mentioned now in the implementation process. So their voices are heard and their needs are reflected. Uh, maybe just what's the approach for attracting and supporting investors in Epukiro? Are there any specific um, in incentives or support systems in place to encourage investors um, in local projects? You see, when if you have an attractive vision, if you have a blueprint, a guiding document that tells you that you want to move from A to B, which is now the, our strategy, transformational strategy map, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's, that's a departure point of attracting investors because they can listen to you. Uh, and we have various pitching platforms within the constituency, within the region, as well as uh, in Windhoek, to be specific commerce. Uh, we pitched at various high level and levels, at high levels with prospective investors. Uh, and in so doing, we have managed to attract uh, seven investors, of which seven prospective investors, of which three are potential investors. As we are speaking now, we have enter into a memorandum of agreement with Value Development Trading CC to construct a lifestyle mall that, could, that will cons consist of 32 shopping malls, different outlets from financial institutions, banking to make sure that we are accommodating banks, commercial banks, uh, NAMPOS, MTC, but also in terms of um, uh, daily needs like ShopRite, um, as well as also for the agricultural related products and hardware. The, they will also construct a modern service station for us. The lifestyle mall is something in the range of 15 million. Uh, the service stations, once again, it's um, in the 20, 12 million, uh, 20 million. But also because of, if you look at our next pillar, which is uh, development enabler, we are looking at sustainable energy and, and therefore, they will be constructing a solar plant. The solar plant that will fit, that will power both the outlets, I mentioned the Bonin service station, as well as the, uh, the lifestyle mall. However, it will be fit into the grid to make sure that it also supply back to Senorite as per the agreements and the arrangements. The meaning that it's important, and that's why we have managed to do that. However, when you go further, you look at our national resource utilizations, one of the sectoral focus area there is resource mobilization. Uh, the community of the Pukiro, uh, in, in collaborations with Eastern Pukiro Farmer Association, IFA, we have came to an agreement where from each kettle salt in a constituency, a $10 goes to a Pukiro Constituency Development Trust Fund. And, and this is the funds that help us to attend to any eventualities. Mm -hmm. It's small, but uh, we said we won't be able and we can expect to attract investors from outside elsewhere mm -hmm. if we ourselves are not resourcing uh, within, it's mobilizing true. resources yeah. within. So, and, and I think it's a good thing. Uh, on quarterly basis, yearly basis, we are giving reports to the community mm -hmm. uh, and that's part of making sure that they are part of the implementation. Mm -hmm. We go as far as villages, remote villages, uh, giving them what we have planned for the year, what we have achieved, what we could not have achieved, mm -hmm. and also giving them an opportunity to share their experience and make sure to also to guide us and give us better ideas in terms of how to approach mm -hmm. and, 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 and improving the, li the livelihood of our community within yeah. the constituency. And looking at how will the success of the development plan be measured over the next um, five years and how will these progress updates be shared with the communities and just the stakeholders in general? Very good. Um, the the Procure Transformational Strategy Map contain a matrix, a matrix that we could refer to as a scorecard Within it, there are key performance indicators or measures uh, that says how many boreholes should we have drilled in year one, or year two, year three, and how many have we drilled. So that's, that's the basis of the measure. So the community 
each and every village has that book. Okay. Now, when we go to them, they look at that, they say, but Honorable Pakara, you said you're gonna do this, where are we on this? Mm -hmm. So it's a measure of success, it's a measure of progress or regress, and also for them to see, to, for certain things that we are overlooking, uh, to keep us, uh, to keep them on track and to keep us on track in terms of the vision and the focus we have outlined for the constituency. Thank you so much for being here with us today and giving us that in, um, insightful information and the development in your constituency. Thank you so much. All right. And that was the Omaheke Regional Councillor of the Epukiro Constituency Office. He just gave us the brief on the development in the, in the constituency. We'll be back with more interviews.